Excellent. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Paul's Hardware. This is a special video. I got a guest here. This is JJ from ASUS. You have probably seen him before. I have been working with him for many years. Thank you for being here, JJ. Thanks for having me, man. Of course. Uh, we're here to talk about new ASUS X99 motherboards. There are actually five that we're going to talk about today. We have three of them here to show you close up. And um, basically, Intel has now launched Broadwell E. Mm -hmm. It's a new stack of CPUs. All those CPUs still use the uh, LGA 2011-3 socket and they will slot into existing X99 motherboards. Correct. But the existing X99 motherboards all suck. They're terrible. No, no, that's not exactly true. But there are some subtle differences from the old X99 boards to the new X99 boards. And of course, there are these new ones from ASUS, which all have sort of unique distinguishing features and that kind of thing. So that's why JJ is here to give us all the information on them. And I'm, I'm excited. Are you guys excited? I'm, I'm definitely excited. I'm, pr I'm pretty excited. All right, so um, let's start off before we even get into the motherboards, and let's talk a little bit about Broadwell E in general. So we have four new CPUs. The only one I've memorized so far is the 6950X. So that is the 10-core, 20-thread monster CPU. It's also fairly expensive, but you know we'll leave that to your decision whether or not you think it's too expensive or not. And it will slot into any of these boards and give you just a pretty significant performance boost, even if you're comparing it to like a 5960X. Correct. I mean, you've got, you know, in general, all the things that you would expect. You've got a huge increase in terms of the cache. You've got the IPC improvements. And then, of course, you have those additional cores. And you've got, you know, of course, the ability to overclock it. And you talk about, of course, just a, an extremely beastly CPU. I mean, um, you know, not necessarily going to be that target demographic in terms of just building a great gaming system. But if you're really looking to have that system that does everything, right, you know, content creation, advanced productivity, gaming, whatever it might be, you know, this is going to be the platform for you. So that CPU and indeed, I think any CPU in the Haswell E or Broadwell E range are aimed at enthusiasts or people who are putting heavy workloads on their systems. You know, if all you're going to be doing is gaming, then you're probably okay with Skylake or sure. upcoming KB Lake. Um, but what we're talking about here right now is systems that do more than just gaming, more than just web browsing. So all of these are obviously geared towards those people. But even amongst those people, there are, of course, some who want more features or less features or that kind of thing. So um, let's get into actually some of the features that you'd say across the board for all these X99, new X99 boards. That was kind of an unintentional pun there, but uh, features that, that match up everywhere. And I think actually the first thing that jumps into my mind is just the aesthetics, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think our focus... Uh, for this generation was to make the best even better. You know, I think we really set a great foundation for our X99 boards. And we did a lot of really cool stuff for that first generation of X99. That was actually the first whiteboards that were really consciously put out there by a motherboard vendor. And we had a lot of great response. One right, there's one right there. Yeah. And uh, we continue that through, of course, with the secondary refresh for X99, as well as NZ170. And so we followed suit for these two new boards here. You've got the Dash A and the Deluxe. They're both going to be followed up by a 2 to designate, essentially, that they're that new version of the board. That's too confusing, Junior. <laughs> <laughs> it's silk screened off. No, I like it. It's, it's, it's the most simple, like, new version of a board ever. Just make it 2. Just make it 2. Like um, and so I think, you know, we even cleaned up the shroud a little bit in terms of the coloring. So you've got the white with just a little bit of uh, silver and kind of gray in terms of the contrast monochromatic pretty much throughout the board there's a little bit of light blue accenting that you're going to see on the primary top of the Very VRM subtle. and then on the PCH a bit um, but it's really subtle I don't think it's going to conflict against anything I think it's going to look fantastic uh, we then jump over into the Strix board, though, and this is a little bit different. Uh, I think it's going to look very, very similar to a lot of people that love the look of the Maximus 8 formula, which was pretty much that kind of complete blacked out board monochromatic. Um, the big distinguishing point in terms of color will, of course, be the two zones that you have here in terms of the, uh, the IO shroud and then here in the PCH where you actually have decals. So while the uh, pre-affixed decals are in orange, you could entirely remove that and go for a really just kind of blacked out look which would fit in pretty much just about any type of build. Uh, or you could use the decals that come included with the board and you could change the color out to pink. You could change it out to green. You could change it out to white. Um, I'm a big fan. I really like the white. Um, and, but So you got, of, you got pink in there. I have, is, did Kyle have something to do with that? Yeah, definitely. I think we looked a little bit at some of his content. Very you know, so will you guys have that. other other color decals that you could maybe get as well? As I these? definitely say if you guys have feedback on that, drop it in the comment section. You know, I think that's one of the reasons why we went that route is that it's an easy way to just be able to add a little bit of contrast color, 
easily to the to the look and feel of the board uh, without adding a high degree of cost and it's very easy for us to kind of shift into different colors if users are interested in this so if you guys want to see different colors let us know okay um, but speaking of colors I mean RGB has really been kind of this this onslaught of all types of RGB right it's other boards graphics cards peripherals all types of products um, and we've led definitely that focus you know we had the Z170 RG boards that had the RGB header and then RGB lighting on the boards um, and now for this generation, we've really taken it to the next level. So all of these boards are going to feature multiple points of RGB lighting. So mm. if we take a look here, let's say at the, um, the, the Dash A, we can see that we've got RGB lighting. It'll be present here on the PCH. We've got RGB lighting uh, for the PCIe slots. And then we also have RGB lighting for the Crystal Sound 3.0 audio section of the board. So that's all fully controllable. You can go into the Aura software, customize it to your heart's content. And all the boards also have our RGB header. So that I think is a really awesome addition. And I like this is an implementation for LEDs on a motherboard we haven't seen before, which is they're actually sitting right beneath the little clasp on the PCIe slot. Yep, the protection And the clasp is, is kind of, it's kind of a smoky clear Yeah, it's, a, it's a semi-translucent. It, yeah. It's very similar to the actual the housing that you're gonna have uh, when you take a look at like the high-end mechanical keyboards mm -hmm. uh, where they allow for superior diffusion and lighting. So that's gonna be present. So all these boards, whether you're talking about the Strix or the Deluxe or the Dash A, all feature these multiple zones of lighting. The Strix is gonna take it a little bit further where it actually has uh, RGB lighting built in here into the IO shroud. So there's a strip that'll light up right here. But cool. same thing, PCIe lighting. And then um, also here in the center of the board, the Republic of Gamers, that is full RGB. It's gotta light up. Correct. RG. And cool. then for the deluxe, you'll pretty much have it where you just have the shroud here on this board, which also has a customizable, uh, customizable RGB lighting. Now, uh, one of the things that when we kind of talk about the general aesthetic, and I think that these are going to make a great foundation uh, for however you want to go, whether it's you know white black bills or however you want to. Uh, set up the look and feel of your system is when talking about these PCIe slots, they look a little bit different, not just because of that um, retention mechanism, which is clear, right? But the actual slot itself is something that we've gone about and redesigned. And I think this is something that I know when you kind of first looked at it, you're like, they look a little bit different, right? They are. I mean, it's got, it's got metal reinforcement here. And granted, we have seen that before mm -hmm. on other competing boards, but Asus has done it special. Yes, uh, for us, you know, we were trying to think about how do we go about really reinventing the PCIe slot. So we went ahead and uh, developed an entirely patent pending process. Now, for the vast majority of users, realistically, it's not going to be something that they really need to concern themselves with that a board that doesn't have this or a slot that doesn't have this is all of a sudden the gar graphics card is going to drop off or anything like this. It's really going to be targeted for users that maybe have ver uh, very high end graphics cards that are much larger, you know, maybe something like a Strix triple fan card, maybe older generational cards that might be two and a half or three slot cards, mm -hmm. or Maybe you're um, moving your system to like a LAN and something like that, or you've got complex water cooling setups and you don't want it to maybe take out the cards and you have that additional movement. You just want to be able to have additional torsion resistance and security. And you're saying for system integrators as well, people who are building systems, you know, for a, as a business and yeah, shipping sure. them places, that's also a big, a big. That was effect. actually one of the, probably the biggest reasons why we went ahead and developed this design is close combination with leading partners. You know, whether you talk about companies like Puget Systems, Falcon Northwest, Digital Storm, a lot of partners that we work with, we were able to get feedback on that on. So when we take a look at these boards, all of them have this, um, but just a little bit to varying degrees with the Strix and with the Dash A, you're gonna have a single slot. And then with the Deluxe, you're gonna have four slots. But every single slot regardless does have the new soldering process that's been implemented. So it's actually still regardless an improvement from even our previous generation boards. Let's transition though. For any of you guys out there, like the true enthusiasts who really don't care or give a damn what the board looks like, let's talk about actual performance connectivity so across the board again, okay, I'm going to keep saying that, <laughs> how can you connect external devices storage to these boards? Well, externally, uh, if we went externally route, I guess I'm thinking external. I mean, I mean, well, how can you connect any storage devices to right. the board? So we, we can tackle a little bit of both. So first and foremost, for the internal stuff that a lot of us are going to be interested in, we've got all the coverage bases. So you got serial ATA, you got M.2 and you got U.2. And we also have SAT Express. And we'll talk about SAT Express in terms of an external connection in a moment. Um, but that means regardless of whatever type of connection you're going to put on this board in terms of the interface for your drive, you're good to go. You don't need to worry about it. Um, Two things I do want to know is that M.2, if we take a look at the boards, we were very conscious about making sure that we wanted to isolate it uh, from where you're generally going to have the, heart, the largest buildup for temperatures or, or CPU heat or GPU heat buildup. A lot of times you see an M.2 directly underneath the primary physical by 16 or above the primary by 16. That's going to be an area where you have the largest amount of heat that pulls up from the graphics card. Mm -hmm. 
or from the CPU. So on boards like the Dash A, you can see that it's all the way down here at the very bottom of the board, right? So that's isolated away. Same thing here, you're gonna have that with the Strix and with the Deluxe, it's actually vertically, uh, which is something that you noticed even in your previous uh, generation because we had the same type of design. So it's really isolated away from primary heat zones. Mm -hmm. So that's a really nice plus point. Uh, with U.2 implemented on all these boards, you don't have to worry about doing something like we had with our previous gens where you had the HyperKit adapter, mm -hmm. which while it's awesome, now you just have that ability you can natively interface and you have the benefit with U.2, of course, to go to much higher capacities. You, you know, you can go up to 1.2 terabytes and newer drives that are coming to market, we're talking two to three plus terabytes of uh, ultra high speed uh, SSD storage. And so you, that's just, awesome. you just physically can't fit that much storage on a standard M.2, you know, stick a gum style drive. Exactly. So, you know, for here, it's the best of both worlds. It's entirely up to you. And we still continue to also have um, all our RAID software that's built into the UEFI so that if you want to easily be able to RAID volumes at a touch of a button, it can automatically go ahead and do that for yeah. you. Now, speaking of externally, you did make a quick note on that. All the new boards do fully support Thunderbolt 3. Oh. So we have a specialized header that's on the board that we've had just like in previous generations. Mm -hmm. So you can go ahead and drop in our Thunderbolt expansion card. And so that gives you Thunderbolt 3 if you want to have high speed external storage or display connectivity or for whatever you want. The Deluxe board actually even comes included with the Thunderbolt card inside the box. Cool. So that's a, a nice touch point. And for a lot of people that ask about the serial ATA, excuse me, SATA Express connection on the board, that's there uh, for one because it's tied into the PCH directly. So those are SATA ports. Uh, you don't have to use it as SATA Express because there's no SATA Express drives. Mm -hmm. But if you want to leverage the PCI Express that SATA Express gives you, we can use that for front USB 3.1 connectivity. So we have two breakout panels. One is a type A and the other one's type C with the Type-C also offering USB power delivery for uh, essentially for next generation of devices. So like external hard drive and stuff like that, you won't have to have like AC adapters, everything will just be bus powered. So on top of all the USB connectivity that you already have on all these boards, and there's USB 3 and 3.1. Uh, Type-A and Type-C. Type-A so and Type-C. You got all the connections covered. Every board's gonna have a USB 3, 3.1, Type-A, Type-C, it's all on board. And then you could add another one via that SATA Express, which I'm glad there's some good use for SATA Express to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's our goal is that we just wanted to be able to provide value to the PCI Express signaling. Mm -hmm. And same thing also for you guys that are building in those nicer higher end chassis that have up to four USB 3 ports. All the boards have dual front uh, USB 3 headers as well. Nice. For the fan aspect of it, this is where things just get utterly insane. This on, is you know, fan expert. Which version are we on? Four. Four. Quattro. For you guys so it supports language. four fans. Yes. No, <laughs> more, more than four. Quite a bit more than four. So for every one of the boards, they all feature pretty much the best fan controls in the industry. We've taken it to just the next level when we talk about this stuff. So every single header fully supports DC and PWM output controls. So that means it doesn't matter what type of fan you connect to it, it's going to fully be able to control it. Uh, we now have full automatic uh, fan detection for DC or PWM fans. So that's great because that means when you run the automatic fan profiling, not only are we going to know what type of fan you've connected, but we can also fully figure out the minimum and maximum operating cur curves. Our dedicated water pump header, so if you're throwing in like a closed loop water cooling solution, you have a dedicated PWM pump for your uh, custom water cooling setup. You now have a dedicated pump that you can calibrate and control. Um, we have a high amperage dedicated fan header for you crazy guys that want to be able to run really high grade RPM based fans, but you can use it like a traditional fan. You're good to go. Um, you can also fully customize all the parameters, whether you're talking about fan speeds or even ramping aspects, not only in the operating system, but also fully within the UEFI. So if you don't want to use our software interface, you can even do the full calibration and all the targeted level of controls inside the operating system. Um, and I think one of the uh, kind of last couple of really cool points that we have here, and I think something that, you know, when we were talking about you were really impressed with is the temperature input mapping. You yes. Know? Traditionally, when you take a look at a motherboard, most people don't realize that uh, the CPU fans, as well as all the fans on the system, respond to just the CPU temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you've got a great cooling solution, you jump into a game, let's say like StarCraft 2, that CPU temp is going to be pretty low. So your intake fans might not necessarily really ramp up to provide more airflow to your graphics card. But now with our boards, we have multiple temperature input sources. So for like the CPU, the VRM, the PCIe slot, the motherboard, the PCH, different places. Every single header can be mapped to a different temperature input source so that that fan can respond most effectively to how you have your system set up and to what your demands are within your system. It's all at the touch of a button, which is cool with the fiber optimization, auto overclock, uh, calibrate your fans, and then uh, if you even want to do some crazy stuff, we have our, our new Turbo app application, which allows you to customize being do like unique profiling so that you can have specific fan profiles and even specific overclocks based on the programs that you open and close and launch. So uh, it's something that's probably a little bit crazy for you guys to think about and consciously about how you work with your system. But imagine, you know, being at full stock, 
uh, with your system, low power consumption, quiet operation when you're in Chrome, then you're jumping in just cost three, your fans ramp up with your overclock, and then maybe you jump into your editing program with a different clock speed across all the cores, different prioritization for your network and different fan profiles. And you didn't have to do anything because you customized all those profiles before. All right, JJ, how about audio? We have Supreme Effects. This is actually something that raises a little bit of a distinction between the, the Strix board and the X99 Correct. boards. All the boards feature our isolated audio design, which kind of everybody is familiar with at this point. So you got, you know, audio grade capacitors, you got an operational amplifier. We have our depop filter, which helps to reduce any popping that you might hear when you restart the system. Mm. You know, a shielded codec, all that good stuff. Uh, but uh, two unique things is one uh, with the signature series boards, we have what's called a pre input power regulator. Okay. And that's because ultimately you're still sharing power with the rest of the motherboard, right? And so we were trying to clean up additional noise that can sometimes present itself, still have maybe users get a little bit of that maybe humming or certain noise that can kind of introduce itself for the front headphone connection. So this is a way of helping to really reduce that down to the lowest that we've ever had on a motherboard. So that's a further level that we've improved the audio experience. On the Strix board, uh, a unique attribute is that unlike the A uh, the or the Deluxe, which have a single op amp, there's actually dual op amps on the board. And mm -hmm. this is nice because uh, if you're using headphones either on the line out connection or the front headphone connection you actually can receive that amplification to give you a little bit more punch up in the volume open up the sound stage so awesome uh, nice improvements there on the audio side beautiful next i want to give you guys a little bit of a closer look at each board i'm going to ask jj to quickly tell us what makes each board distinct unique or what his favorite features are we're going to start off with the uh, most budget friendly board the x99 dashi which we don't have right here but here's a picture of it and uh jj what, what do you what do you think about this board very competitive price point 229 i'm sorry 219 dollars yeah 200 is such a 20 bucks um for a board that's going to give you asus quality great premium design it's got the fan expert for it has actually lighting on the board for the audio section and for the PCI slots. You've even got a single safe slot. You got all the great connections on it. It's really just a reduction in a couple of the key aesthetic attributes and some of the connections, things like Wi-Fi uh, or some of the additional connections you have in terms of more SATA, things along those lines, but great foundation for anybody looking for a more aggressively priced build. So JJ, what's your favorite thing about the X99A version two? Um, you know, I think it's just an awesome bang for the buck board. I think it looks great. I love the fact that you've got those three zones of lighting, you know, uh, with the PCH, the PCI slots, and you know, on the Crystal Sound 3.0 area. But I think it's just, it's got everything packed in and it's pretty much everything I want and nothing really extra superfluous, but uh, it's just got, it's all packed in there. And all the nice little things on the board that, you know, uh, are hard to sometimes call out, but they're all there too. You know, you got an easy exit P switch, you know, you've got the digital power delivery for the memory and for the CPU. You got those great quality power components, you know, quick LEDs to debug the board is really nice when you're putting together the system. Uh, you know, for your CPU, for your memory, for your DRAM, for your storage devices. So I think all those little things baked in are, are just really nice. And overall, I think the aesthetic looks great. Love the way those dims that you put on there look too. Oh yeah, that G-Skill memory. Definitely check, gotta check, love it. Check it out, guys. Super sexy. Here is the X99 Strix. JJ, you got you got, there's got to be a lot of love for this board, right? Absolutely love it. I mean, I think you just look at it right off the bat, and I love just that kind of that dark, monochromatic look and feel. In some ways, the angles, I think, also have a really nice uh, just aggressiveness to it without just being overbearing. And uh, I just love the positioning of all the lighting on the board, too. I think that having that centralized RGB lighting uh, for the Republic of Gamers logo is killer. And even little things actually I really like too, as I, I like that we made this compatible with our ROG front base so that if you really want to maximize the front headphone quality, you can bypass the near chassis and connect that as an optional accessory. But I think for anybody that's seriously taking a look at a board that's got a really clean aesthetic, um, the fact you know that every single slot on here is pretty much all uh, blacked out, I think is going to really complement the uh, really nice contrasting colors, especially if you want to go with bright colors, you know, blue, white, red, anything like that. It's going to be a great looking combination, so love this board. And here's the X99 Deluxe version 2. Uh, I, I really like this board, and guys, just to let you know, I will be doing a full review of this board, although probably not until I get back from Computex. Yeah, I think this is a beautiful looking board. I, and I love also just the uh, the beefiness of it when you look at it, you know, those huge heat pipes. You've got one here in the central portion of the board that extends into the PCH. And then you've got that really big heat pipe uh, that extends from the primary VRM heatsink all the way into another heatsink that goes into the IO shroud. I think that's just awesome. Helps to keep the board really cool. But all the little subtle touches on this board are great in terms of, you know, things like dual U.2 with 
I love the vertical U.2 and the vertical M.2 on this board. Oh, yeah. I think that's a, that's a really nice touch. But I didn't even notice the vertical U.2. Yeah, so you can see right there. Oh, that's fun. Vertical and vertical, so side by side. Um, all those little touches, I think, on this board and the fact that it just it comes packed in with the fan extension card, the Thunderbolt 3, the secondary Hyper M.2 expansion card are all inside the box and the three zones of lighting and that really clean Crystal 3.0 shroud, which is RGB. I think it's just an awesome board. And that's just about gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. Thank you for sticking with us all the way through it. All of these boards will be available, if not now, very, very soon. So check out your favorite online retailer for them. JJ, yep. thank you so much for coming by today and doing what you do. Thanks for having me here, man. It's been awesome. You should. And, and guys, let me know in the comment section if whenever Asus has launches like these, you want JJ to come by and tell us all the information. Because I know I get a lot out of it, and I hope you do too. Thanks for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.